No way, that worked first time. Hey, Wi-Fi lifers, I've just realised that I don't think I'm actually supposed to shoot video in the airport, but I'm at Brisbane Airport, having just, where's departures, can you see? Departures is just there. But I'm gonna go outside because I did just have a nice little seat. And, um, hey Meg, I had a nice seat and then a guy came and sat down with four screaming kids, so I'm not gonna sit there. But I wanted to do a live from Brisbane Airport because the last time I was here and did a live video, it was for somewhat different reasons. And it just kind of struck me that I did a live from Brisbane Airport last year. Um, and I had a few revelations and I thought it would be really cool to just sit here in the moment that I'm in and share a few more revelations. Who's that? There's three people here, awesome. Um, so it's been a bit of a big 24 hours and I just, I did a video the other day and it was the topic of um, why aren't you living your best life now? I got up for the sunrise and was just sharing like what are the things in your perfect day that you could actually achieve now if you did them now. And um, I'm at Brisbane Airport because I've just dropped my mum off to fly back to the UK. So if I've got a few um, smudgy eyes, a bit of smudgy makeup around my eyes or looking a bit red eyed, there's been a few tears, I'm not gonna lie. However, it wasn't anywhere near as bad or as painful or as heartbreaking as it normally is. Um, and for anyone who lives overseas or as parents or friends or family living overseas and they do the airport thing, I would highly recommend you don't do the airport thing, just stick them in a cab and send them off because that makes it a lot easier. But on this occasion we were doing the airport thing and the tears started at about four o'clock this afternoon, on and off. Um, but the reason I wanted to shoot this video was more around choices that we all have the power to make um, in regards to being happy, in regards to living the life we want to live, um, you want to live, or me making the choices that I want to live, um, the life that I want to live. And something I'm really passionate about sharing now is that I think far too many people are not making choices that they could quite not necessarily easily make, but simple choices when you boil everything down to what you actually want. So, miss her already. She misses you too, Megs. You bloody started this tears situation um, by popping over earlier and saying goodbye again. Um, yeah, my mum and I, and this is kind of her news to share, so part of me thinks Mm, should I be shooting a Facebook Live about this? Because if any of our friends or family are watching, um, it's news that Mads should probably be sharing herself. However, the last thing, one of the last things she just said to me was, I want you to focus on you now. I want you to go and smash your business. And that's great. And I totally intend to do that. But one of the things that is absolutely part of my business and part of my mission is, is having these authentic conversations and sharing insights and sharing things that I'm experiencing that I truly believe can impact other people. Um, and one thing that I'm really passionate about is that not enough people are making choices that they could absolutely make to improve their lives and achieve the things that they say they want to achieve. Now that doesn't always come down to money. So my mum was here, I'm just going to share what's been going on to put this into context. My mum was here for nearly seven weeks because um, the last time I was here at Brisbane Airport shooting Facebook Live was on my way home for a funeral. I'm in a bus zone. I think I'm allowed to sit in the bus zone, but the, the taxi that just pulled up is not. Um, I was at Brisbane Airport flying home for my stepfather's funeral. And um, I was just sharing how, you know, thankfully I was in a position due to starting a business online three years earlier. I was able to pick up my laptop with no permission needed from a boss and I fortunately had the money to just jump on a plane at short notice and be home for my mum and then later in the year I found myself doing exactly the same thing because my grandmother passed away and that was a choice I made three or four years ago with absolutely no idea that the shit would hit the fan as royally as it did last year but with that said um, thank God I did because the business looked after me last year doing very little and mum has just come over having she sold her house to downsize 
and it's the house that she lived in with my stepdad for 20 years. Um, she looked after my nan there and she now doesn't need to live there. So she sold her house and she was buying, it was in the process um, of buying um, a property to move into for herself and it was due to complete at the end of March and we were supposed to get it completed and her move in before she came over here and for whatever reason it got held up and um, for one reason or another we just thought well she wants to get out of her house so she's going to sell she completed that sale and there was a bit of a risk with that so she's put all her stuff in storage and she's kind of homeless and in limbo but with the understanding that this house that she was buying was going to complete. One thing led to another um, and it got delayed again and again and again. And this was partly because there were four people in a chain of properties completing and the one at the top of the chain was in probate, which is the term we use in the UK for a deceased person's estate being settled and it was holding everything up. So it got put back and it got put back and it got put back. and. We were supposed to complete the beginning of this month while she was away and the decorator was going to go in and do some work for her. Anyway, we got an email yesterday to say again that it's going to be another week. And in the meantime, we've collected lots of paperwork. I've spent a fortune on solicitor's fees, on mortgage broker fees, because I was refinancing a property of my own to help her move in um, just because it was a house that we didn't quite have the budget for. And what was going to happen is that she was going to move into this house. It will be her forever home until she doesn't, you know, she can't live on her own anymore. Possibly move to Australia in the future. But this, this great house. But my mum lives on a state pension. And I'm sure she won't mind me sharing this because I think it's important that more people hear this kind of story. And she, she basically was in a situation where um, this was going to delay the move even longer. All her stuff's in storage. So every week that goes by, there's more expense. And I just got to the point where I felt like, I think we need to listen to the universe right now. It feels like this is not supposed to happen. Meanwhile, she's been in Australia. We've had some amazing quality time together. We've had some epic conversations and revealed things to each other that we didn't even know were there in terms of feelings about uh, my childhood, my upbringing, how I feel responsible for her. Um, I'm an only child, she's not got loads of money, I paid for her flight out, like, and it, we just had some really amazing conversations where a lot of that doesn't actually work in terms of the feeling it's generating for her not feeling independent and for me, you know, I've, I've also started setting goals around maintaining that and it just, as a parent-child relationship, it just doesn't work and that's been a big breakthrough for me and a big learning for me. So I said, I think we kind of need to listen to the universe on this house that you're buying. Is it really what you want? Because it's all very well having the perfect house. But if on a month to month basis, and I think this is relevant to so many more people than just retired people that li live on a pension, you can have the perfect house. But if you don't have enough money every month to leave that house and do anything else with your life, is it worth having that house? which was essentially the position it was going to leave my mum in once she moved into it. She lives on a state pension, she's got a little bit of other money, she does still work and she could choose to work more, she's very lucky to still have full health and she absolutely is capable of working more hours and making more money. But that's not what we believe is true leverage or true freedom, right? I want that to be a choice for her and at 71 I think that should be a choice for her. So. We just had a really amazing conversation and I called upon a financial mentor I have, sorry a coach has just called up, I called upon a financial mentor, Mike Cooper, and this is a massive, massive shout out to Mike. Anyone in Australia, I don't care where you live, if any of this is resonating or your finances are not where you think they should be or you're crap at managing your money or you've got big goals but don't know how to get there any of the above don't understand finance any any reason that you can think of where be it you don't score your finances a 10 out of 10 you need to call Mike Cooper <laughs> and I will post a link to his page in these comments but we sat down with Mike and I laid out on the table what I thought might be a better suggestion for my mum and this was today this morning and I said to Mike, I own a property in the UK, it's got a mortgage on it. Would it not make more sense 
for my mum to live in that and pay me rent so I can pay my mortgage and basically be my tenant. Um, I wouldn't make cash flow from it, granted. I do currently make a little bit of cash flow from that because it, it rents for more than the mortgage. Would it not make more sense for my mum to move into there, she's got a roof over her head, and take this capital that she's got from selling her house, which wasn't enough really to buy the house anyway, I was gonna go and pull out more mortgage, and just live her bloody life. She's 71, like, what's this? Magic Mike, he's a legend, yes he is. Um, live her life, like, there's enough there to buy a property. Now it might not be the property that she wants to live in, because she can live in mine, which is in an area that she is familiar with. And she could take that money and buy a different property that would give her an income. And instantly, as of literally tomorrow, she's already completed the sale of her house. The money is in the bank. We're just sitting there waiting to spend it on another, another house. And like, as of tomorrow, actually as of tonight, she's gone business class because I upgraded her yesterday. And it's like, you know, she's just spent seven weeks in Australia. I'm her only child. She'll more than likely move here in the future. What that money would buy in Australia is beyond, I, I don't even want to think, compared to where she is in London. And it's like, your life instantly changes just by making that choice. Just by being willing to make the choice to live in a slightly different accommodation. Like, instantly, just make the choice. So basically, we checked her in and we sent, we quickly called our lawyer. And for anyone in my family that might be watching this, this is totally Mads' news to share, but the perspective and the lessons that I'm learning from it is what I want to share with a lot more people than my family. And I know that this has the, this has the potential to reach one person who might make a choice tomorrow. And if it does that, great. Which, love you guys, but that's more important right now. <laughs> and Mads, if you're watching this and are pissed off that I've just broken all your news, well, this is more important. And you did tell me to go and do what I needed to do with my business, which is what I'm doing. Um, and I just felt it was really important to share this story because that one decision, that one choice, is actually going to result in instantly better lifestyle for her now, instantly higher level of happiness. Already, we've said like this week, go book your flight for Christmas, you'll be back in six months, which just made our goodbye a lot easier. And five years from now, what that capital will turn into by being invested elsewhere is like, like there's, there, there is absolutely a reward now, but there's absolutely bigger rewards further down the track. And it was so simple. When we actually just got down to the, the sort of facts of what she wanted that was gonna make her happy, What's gonna make her happy is being able to come here twice a year. What's gonna make her happy is knowing that she is empowered and independent and can go and pay for her own stuff and not feel shit every time I buy her something or pay for something because I feel that's one of my goals. That's what I'm basing all my, my goals around. And I feel great that I can look after my mum, but I've never actually sat down and thought about how it's making her feel. And that one choice, that one decision in the space of 24 hours has just changed both our lives. It's changed our relationship with each other. It's 100% gonna change our future lifestyle, our future relationship. It's 100% gonna change her future. And it's something we can start building for her now. Um, all because of a choice, but also because of the right education and the right mentorship and the right focus in terms of what she actually wants, what I actually want. And it's the first time in my life that like seeking out that education and seeking out that advice and that guidance and that mentorship and the right people, it's not the first time in my life, it's the first time in her life that's resulted in something that's genuinely contributing to her happiness. And she's 71, it's taken 71 years for her to make a decision that makes her happy, not someone else happy. And that moves me on to another bullet point that I put up there, which is all about being selflessly selfish. Um, we're both guilty, me and my mum, and I've probably learnt it from her, of just never really doing that. And some people that know me might disagree with that. But like, you can never be selfish to the point that it doesn't impact other people in some way. So, 
you, you've got to be the best version of yourself. If you're, if you're, if you're setting goals and you want to go out there and earn more money or you want to create a better life, it's not actually just for you, is it? It's always going to be for someone else as well. But in the process of doing that, you're going to have to be selfish and focus on that one thing. And at the same time, if you're selfless and only ever thinking about everybody else, you're being quite selfish because it doesn't pay off in the long run. Trust me, it backfires royally in your face. So that was another thing. And I just really wanted to share this story and this situation whilst I'm in the moment. Um, I thought I was going to get really emotional, but it's actually not. I'm actually feeling really happy and excited about what that decision has just done. Like, mum and I have been making an effort to go for a walk on the beach every couple of nights or almost every night. And we've had these kind of conversations. And I just looked at her and I was like, isn't this what you want more of? Just walking on a beach. You can live in a frigging shoebox in on the Gold Coast somewhere and we can do this every day when you live here or you can come here twice a year rather than have this perfect house in her local area at home, which you're never going to leave because you haven't got enough money every month to do anything. The only way to get money out of that house once she'd moved into it, if she'd bought it, would have been through a system called equity release, which I know we have in Australia as well. I don't know about other parts of the world, which basically means... The bank will give you a load of money, but they also seize your house. And, well, they'll charge you an interest rate that essentially means you're paying double in 10 years' time. So if you live longer than 10 years, you're screwed because then the value of what you owe them is bigger than what your asset is worth. And this financial education, yeah, for me, that started by reading a book, by reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that led on to being interested in property. And that led on to realising that property is actually a bit of a pain in the ass at times. And that led on to going and looking up how I could start a business online, which has led me step by step by step to here. All because of one choice and a series of of subsequent choices. And we all always have the power to make those choices, whether it's how you respond to something. Um, But the, the biggest point I wanna drive home is the video I started the other day on the beach with the sunrise, which is why aren't you living your best life now? What choices can you make now to do that? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't make those choices for you. Be selflessly selfish. Put yourself first and live the life that you want to live. Um, because it's actually really bloody simple when you do. <laughs> Decisions become and choices become a lot simpler and easier to make when um, you just decide what you really want, what's important to you. Um, and you know, if a bigger house and a nicer car is important to you and genuinely wakes you up feeling fulfilled every day, great, go do that. I don't think that's what the majority of people then discover once they have those things, but then they're stuck. Well, they think they're stuck. They're probably not as stuck as they think they are. They can still choose to get rid of those things, but I I am rambling now, um, but I didn't plan this. I might revisit it with a bit more of a succinct video, but I just wanted to share from the airport because life could not look more different than it did a year ago when I sat here and did a Facebook Live on my way home for a funeral, the first of two. So it was kind of eerily ironic. Um, So yeah, I'll wrap this one up and um, update you. And anyone, friends, family, if anyone's watching, that's the big news for Mads. Um, And I'm sure she won't mind me sharing that because I, I hope that there was some insight and experience in there that If one person just makes a choice today that makes them happier, then my work here is done for the day. So I'm going to take my fucking expensive airport bottle of water and (laughs) rehydrate myself from the tears. Oh, no shit. I've actually left that really expensive bottle of water in the airport. How awesome is that? (laughs) Having just had a massive rant about financial education, I've just left a whole bottle of $5 water in the airport. Don't do that. Bad choice. Bad financial choice. Um, okay, I'm going to wrap it up and maybe revisit some of these topics as things unfold. See you soon, kids. Bye.